Do we live in the best of all possible worlds? Despite all the suffering and evil in the universe, could it really be that the world can't get any better? Well, if you're Leibniz, then the answer is a resounding yes. Welcome back to Untangle Philosophy. Today we're exploring how the 17th and 18th century philosopher Leibniz tackled the problem of evil. The problem of evil is the challenge of reconciling the existence of evil with an all-loving, omnibenevolent, and all-powerful, omnipotent God. If God is both these things, why do we suffer? Wouldn't he, out of love, just remove evil? Responses to this question are known as theodicies. In fact, the term theodicy was coined by Leibniz himself in his 1710 work Theodicy. Oh, not very good at French. Wait, hold on. Here, here we go. Here we go. Theodicy. There. Leibniz's argument goes like this. We can imagine many possible worlds, each slightly different from the next, but since God is good, he must have necessarily created the best of all these possible formulations of worlds. What about all the evil? Well, according to Leibniz, God has twiddled the dials of good and evil to create the optimal balance between the two. That is to say, for it to be possible to experience the amount of pleasure that is available to us, there must be some evil. And the evil in our world is the least amount necessary for the most possible good. As with other theodicies, free will plays a big role here. The best possible world, Aquinas argues, has to contain free will because goodness is only meaningful if we choose it freely. A world in which we were not free to choose evil would not be the best because the value of goodness would be reduced. What's interesting is that Thomas Aquinas, a 13th century philosopher, questioned whether it's even possible to create the best world. He argued that no matter how good a world you envisage, there will always be a better one. Just as there's no higher number, there is an infinity of possible worlds, each increasingly better than the last. Therefore, according to Aquinas, there's no such thing as the best of all possible worlds. And since creating the perfect world is impossible, we can't blame God for not doing so. Lawrence's response to this criticism is fascinating, and in my opinion, much more impressive than his theodicy itself. He deploys what's known as the principle of sufficient reason. Leibniz is credited with methodologically formulating this principle, but it has a history that dates back to the ancient Greeks with the pre-Socratic philosopher Anaximander. The principle of sufficient reason states that nothing exists without a reason for its being and for being as it is. Aquinas' argument doesn't provide a reason for why one world exists over any other. Why did God create this world and not a slightly better one? And if he had created a slightly better one, why not a better one still, ad infinitum? Aquinas' position, Leibniz argues, violates the principle of sufficient reason because there is always a stronger reason for creating the next best world. If we follow Aquinas' argument to its logical conclusion, there should be no world at all, because there would never be a sufficient reason for creating one world over another. But is God really bound to this principle? Can he not just create whatever he wants with no reason at all? According to Leibniz, no. If God didn't adhere to the principle of sufficient reason, his decisions would be arbitrary and random. Leibniz's account, on the other hand, satisfies the principle God created this world because it is the best of all possible worlds, and as a good God, he would necessarily create the best one. But what about the sheer magnitude of suffering in the world? Could God have made a world without horrors like the rape and murder of children? Could he find no way of doing this without compromising the best features of reality? Surely a world without these atrocities would be better than ours. Leibniz responds that evil is part of a larger good that we can't fully grasp. We don't understand how all the evils in the world fit together with the good, so we can't say for certain that removing evil would make the world better. The 18th century philosopher Voltaire enjoyed ridiculing Leibniz for his theodicy, especially in his satirical work Candide, or wait, hold on. Indeed. But also in a collection of philosophical reflections called the Pocket Philosophical Dictionary. That's the English title. He took aim at the implication that original sin must be a feature of the best of all possible worlds on Leibniz's account. Voltaire sarcastically asks, What? Get yourself thrown out of a land of delights where you could have lived forever if you hadn't eaten an apple? 
What, give birth in poverty to wretched children who will suffer everything and make others suffer everything too? What, catch every disease, fill every sorrow, die in pain, and to cap it all, burn forever and ever? Was that really the best hand you could have been dealt? That is not too good for us, so how can it have been good for God? In attempting to answer this question, Voltaire accuses Leibniz of writing fat books that made no sense. Leibniz's best of all possible worlds theodicy sparked intense debate. Whether mocked or celebrated, it started from the logical principle that a good god would have necessarily created the best possible world. Any evils that we can't explain simply reflect our ignorance as mere mortals with feeble understanding. What do you think of Leibniz's theodicy? Is it a convincing response to the problem of evil, or is Voltaire right to poke fun at it? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more theodicies and other philosophical content. Thank you for watching, see you next time!